Ladies and gentlemen, the Artemis Singers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the distinguished guests for today's signing ceremony of Senate Bill 10, the Religious Freedom and Marriage Fairness Act.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is our distinct pleasure to welcome University of Illinois President Robert Easter and UIC Pride President Jennifer Guyman to the podium for our welcoming remarks. Good afternoon. It is truly a pleasure to welcome all of you to the University of Illinois at Chicago on this very historic moment. It's now truly a personal honor for me to introduce our governor, Pat Quinn, a true friend of the University of Illinois. Governor Quinn is the 41st governor of our great state, but he's also an ex-official ex member of our board of trustees, and he's active in that role when he's able to be with us. I'm grateful for his commitment to higher education and the power that it holds to lead social and economic progress for Illinois and our nation. Please join me in welcoming Governor Quinn to this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming. We're ready to get going here, but I think before we start, we are a family in Illinois, a large family of 13 million people. Something very difficult and tragic happened over the weekend on Sunday. We lost six Illinoisans uh, to deadly tornadoes across our state. So before we begin our ceremony, I think it's uh, more than appropriate that we have a moment of silence for the six men and women who lost their lives on Sunday. God bless their immortal souls. I think it's important also that we understand that in our great country, we are all in this together, and we understand the importance of our patriotism every single day, every moment of the day. We're blessed by God to live in a democracy, the first democracy on planet Earth, the best democracy, and I think it's now appropriate that we bring forward Sammy Grisefe, who will sing our national anthem. broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming Through the night 
I want to thank Sammy for that stirring rendition of our national anthem. And now we are bringing forth uh, Braden Newbecker and her brothers Michael Newbecker and Cody Boda. Uh, we're going to uh, pledge our allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, led by Braden. Come on forward. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done. Very well done. Okay. We are now going to begin our ceremony, our bill signing ceremony. I think it is important that the constitutional officers of the state of Illinois have a chance to speak. Each and every one of these officers has been elected by all the people of our state of Illinois. We're the fifth largest state. We have 13 million people. It's important for each and every constitutional officer to be heard who is here today. And without further ado, our Lieutenant Governor, Sheila Simon. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. As a, as a mother of two daughters, as a wife of 26 years to Perry Allen Canope, I am a proud Illinoisan today. Many thanks to all sorts of people. Governor, thanks to you for being a leader on this historic legislation and in doing the final act to get it into law. Thanks to the legislature, the House, and the Senate, and particularly to Heather and Greg for all of your work for getting this done. And they deserve lots of credit, but there's lots of people here who deserve credit just as much. Thanks to all of you who organized, who wrote letters and postcards, who made phone calls. And thanks to those of you who didn't even do that, but who did important things in your office place, where you put up the picture of the whole family on your desk. Thanks to those who, with your partner, are singing in the church choir. Thanks to the two moms who bring their daughter to soccer practice. Thanks to everyone in the state of Illinois for making this a land that we can be all proud of. It's time to stop planning rallies and start planning weddings. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, we're off to an excellent start, and it's important to understand that we are changing our law today. Uh, we are a nation of laws, we're a state of laws, and our chief legal officer will make sure that our laws are always upheld and enforced and uh, advanced is with us here today, our Attorney General, Lisa Madigan. Come forward, Lisa. Good afternoon. I am thrilled to be part of this historic celebration of equality. It has been a long and painful wait for many people in Illinois, and some people didn't live long enough to be with us today. So I brought one of them along in the form of my necklace, Dawn Clark Netch. <laughs> It's it was really her necklace, we didn't understand that. But now, thanks to years of grassroots efforts, legal battles, and legislative courage, marriage equality will be a reality for all couples in Illinois. And that is as it should be, because at its heart, marriage equality is about the fundamental American principles of fairness and freedom and it is about families. Enacting marriage equality brings an end to the discrimination that has excluded gay and lesbian couples from having their relationships recognized as legitimate and legal. So today, we welcome in a new proud chapter in our state's history of progress. But even as we celebrate this momentous occasion and thank and honor all of those who have fought so passionately for this law, we recognize that our fight for equality is not at an end. 
Because we know that it is one thing to change the law, but it is quite another to change minds. That is why we will celebrate today, and tomorrow we will continue our work to promote tolerance and fight hatred. We will continue to advocate We will continue to advocate so that children, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, all people are truly afforded the same dignity and respect that everyone deserves. Congratulations and thank you very much. I, our next speaker I spoke to just before we came into the uh, auditorium here. And he was in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. He was there with Rosa Park and also with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And he understands full well how important it is that our nation uh, advance civil rights, equal rights for everyone. Uh, he's our very own Secretary of State, Jesse White. Thank you very much, Governor Quinn. A special thanks to the members of the Illinois General Assembly for passing this landmark piece of legislation. I applaud, commend, and thank you for discharging your duties in a manner in which all of us could be proud. For many, many years, I've been a strong advocate of civil rights and equal rights and human rights. This is a great day for all of us. Let's rejoice in it. I commend my wonderful governor for affixing the signature to this wonderful piece of legislation. Let's go forward because today is a day for us to rejoice. Thank you. Many people participated in this, uh, making this day possible. Uh, people of both parties, political parties, people from all over our state of Illinois. We thank our legislators who made this day possible in the House and the Senate. And someone who has been steadfast in her advocacy of this particular law we're making into reality today is with us, and that's our Comptroller, Judy Bar Topinka. Well, thank you. It is a real honor and a pleasure and a delight. I am so happy to be here today, and I thank Governor Quinn for helping to make this possible because he's been right there in the leadership of this, getting us all together, and he's absolutely right. It takes both parties to make something happen. And when we work together, look what we can do. And needless to say, we had to get the right vote count in Springfield. It's all, it's a matter of numbers. You gotta have the votes, and if you don't, it's all over. So I especially want to thank some folks who were very, very brave in the Republican Party who were there for you. And that's Representative Ed Sullivan Jr., Representative Ron Sadlack, <laughs> Representative Tom Cross, and Senator Jason Barrickman. They were there. You know, the, it, it, it's sometimes a hard vote, but you know what? When you do the right thing, and it's a matter of conscience, and you can go to bed at night, and you can sleep well because you, you were there to make history for the, all the right reasons, it's a good feeling, and it feels real good, and these folks did it, all of these folks. They were there for you. The House, the Senate, they were there for you, and they worked hard at it. I especially want to thank, too, the determined Representative Harris, because without him, what a guy.
My goodness, even the top of his head is blushing. But you know what, I think we can, you know, to really get serious, I think we can take great pride in knowing that our laws do not discriminate uh, against any loving couples that choose to form a new family and take on life together. It's a beautiful thing, and God love you for it. So you know Illinois takes a lot of guff for a lot of things, and frankly, sometimes it's well-deserved. But. I've thrown a bit of it myself from time to time. <laughs> but history, I think, will show that we got it right on this one. No guff on this one. And I just want to end by noting that I am available to be a flower girl, and I'll even wave the fee. I want to thank the irrepressible Comptroller, who used to be the treasurer. Uh, she speaks for all of us that we're all in this together, and someone who has uh, embodied that in this county, the county that we're in, Cook County, one of the largest counties in America. It's larger than about 35 states. She's a great leader. She was a passionate advocate of marriage equality and helping us get this uh, bill passed by the legislature, and that's Tony Preckwinkle. Come forward, Tony. Good afternoon. Today, the legislation that will be signed into law represents a victory for Illinois. Throughout our nation's history, individuals and groups have fought for equal protection under the law. The battles to define a person, a citizen, a voter, a marriage. As a history teacher, I firmly believe that marriage equality is the civil rights issue of our time. And while there have been heated debates across the nation, at the core, this is an issue of basic human rights. I support marriage equality as a matter of public policy and law, and, and as well as personally. I'm proud of Illinois for realizing that everybody, everybody deserves the right to marry the person they love. Throughout our nation's history, nothing worth fighting for has been achieved easily. And I know that a lot of work went into making this law and, and this celebration today. Special thanks to Governor Quinn, who's been a champion of this issue all along. And with kudos to good people in the Republican Party, like Judy Bartopinka, I would point out that none, none of the Republican candidates for governor have been willing to stand up on this issue. I want to acknowledge the great work of State Representative Greg Harris and Senator Heather Staines. And if I may, I would ask every member of the state legislature who is here to stand up to be acknowledged. You know the names of many who stood, but there are others whose names will never appear in the history books, who organized, who mobilized, who lobbied. Their persistence and determination made this day possible, and everyone, everyone in Illinois is better for it. Thank you.
Well, thank you, Tony. And uh, we live in a great city, the city of Chicago. That's where the University of Illinois at Chicago is located. Our next speaker needs no introduction. He's been a fierce advocate of marriage equality since day one, and that's our mayor, Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Thank you, Governor. With the governor's signature today, Illinois goes on record. There is no straight or gay marriage. From now on, there is only marriage in Illinois. That is the way it is in the eyes of the people who love each other. And from now on, that is the way it is in the eyes of the Illinois law. As a result of this historic legislation and the governor's historic signature, those first 33 couples whose civil unions the governor and I officiated in one of my first things I've done as mayor can now marry their partners with the full benefits and the full respect they deserve, just like everyone else. Those first couples in Illinois will no longer be second-class citizens. That is true to who we are as a city and who we are as a state. We've realized that to have a forward-moving state, you cannot have backward-looking laws that discriminate against good and talented people, regardless of their sexual orientation. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are our doctors. They are our nurses. They are our teachers. And most importantly, they are our family members. And we must remember we love each other and take care of each other, regardless of anyone's sexual orientation. So I hope that the leaders across the country follow the lead we are taking here in Illinois. Today, we make marriage equality the expectation in Illinois, not the exception. And I want, and because of the governor's leadership, and because of so many others that can be thanked, not just for today, but to remember back, as, the arc of, as everybody has always said, the arc of history always bends towards justice. That in a short period of time, our nation has gone on record with hate crimes legislation. It has gone on record that you cannot discriminate if you receive federal dollars. And you cannot any longer up discriminate in the armed services. And now Illinois goes on record with marriage equality. Congratulations to all those who have given blood, sweat, and tears for this day. Congratulations on your day. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And we now want to bring forward someone who spoke uh, on November 5th, 15 days ago, from the uh, Chamber of the House of Representatives, where he has served for more than four decades. He spoke uh, for all of Illinois, for our history. And it's important that we listen again to Speaker Mike Madigan. Governor, thank you very, very much. I'll be very brief and simply say I'm very happy to join with everyone in this celebration. I'm very happy to have worked on behalf of the passage of the bill in the House of Representatives. I want to give the appropriate credit first to Heather Staines for her sponsorship in the Senate. And then in particular to Greg Harris for his sponsorship in the House. Thank you very much and enjoy the day. Well, thank you for that very long and uh, impassioned uh, re speech. The best speeches are not eternal. And I think it is important to acknowledge right now that the spirit of democracy, the spirit of America, lies in the hearts of the people, all the people. And that's really why we're here today. We're celebrating democracy. And 
In particular, I want to salute Fred Eichner and uh, Lord uh, Ricketts, who were part of the movement that made this day possible. But everyone had a role to play. That's the great thing about our country. Every person counts. But we need to have leaders in the legislature who uh, get us to a better place. And in our Senate, on Valentine's Day of this year, that's a long time ago it seems, uh, but on that day, the Senate of the state of Illinois passed the marriage equality law and passed it on to the House. And I want to thank the sponsor of the legislation in the Senate who worked with her fellow senators to pass this important measure. It uh, makes sure that Illinois does not uh, have a situation where individuals are discriminated against in any way when it comes to love and marriage. And someone who spoke about this, who organized not only on that day, but every day since then to make this day possible. And I want to bring her forward now, and that's Senator Heather Staines. colleagues. Um, Senate President uh, Cullerton's not been able to be here today, uh, but he has been a stalwart supporter from the start, truly helping in any way he could uh, with this bill. Uh, anything I needed, he, he did. Uh, and he slated this bill to pass on Valentine's Day in the Senate. Um, and I never knew he was such a romantic, uh, as well as such a class act guy. Uh, so in absentia, I really want to thank uh, Senate President for his leadership. Um, <laughs> And I want to tell a story about my colleagues, um, brief. I have so many colleagues. It's such an honor to be a part of this team. Uh, the day when we were going uh, out to vote on the bill, right beforehand, we're in caucus in the Senate President's office. And um, you know, we went around polling, making sure we had enough votes. Well, we had more than we needed. And the Senate President said, OK, does anybody want to drop off? I'm like, what are you doing? No. And uh, he's like, no, you know, sometimes we go out there and get surprises because people think we've got extras. And uh, one of my colleagues said, okay, going, going, gone, and nobody left. And everybody stayed on there and nobody wanted to back down because they all knew it was the right thing to do. I am so honored to serve with my colleagues here. Thank you all very much for just being such stand-up human beings in all of us. My partner, Greg Harris, has spent his career uh, for this day um, and a cause that's so near and dear to him. Uh, and he's had many colleagues at his side. Uh, I'll let him really speak to that. Um, but I, w I do want to just mention one in particular in addition to Greg Harris, and that's uh, Representative Kelly Cassidy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kelly, um, her mother passed away three days ago, so she could not be here today. Uh, so she is there for her service right today, probably as we speak, in Florida. Uh, and Kelly, I want you to all know, has crisscrossed this state over the summer and the fall, really swaying the votes and hearts of her colleagues for support of this bill. And in her stead, uh, Kelly Quinn, her partner, is here with us on the stage, and her three kids are here, down here, Daniel, Ethan, and Joshua. And uh, I am so delighted that their parents now, Kelly and Kelly, they got engaged on Valentine's Day after the Senate passed it in the House, and I'm so engaged they can now say their vow is here in Illinois. Uh, today, Illinois makes history uh, by recognizing all loving, committed relationships. We send a powerful message that we in Illinois do not discriminate. We do not treat anybody as a second-class citizen. And it has been a long and bumpy road getting to this place. Uh, we passed the Illinois Human Rights Act in 2005, ending prohibit prohibiting discrimination in employment and public accommodation. Uh, two years ago, in 2011, we passed civil unions. Uh, we learned, however, that this is far from equality. 
In January, we hear testimony from Teresa Vope and, Marisa and Mercedes Santos, mothers of seven-year-old Ava, four-year-old Jaden, and eight-day-old Lennox, who I think are also here with us today. They told us about Jaden being hospitalized near death for kidney failure. When Teresa arrived, a hospital administrator barred her from entering unless she identified herself as a stepmother, since Mercedes was already there with Jaden and she could only have one real mother. We learned about Jim Darby and Patrick Boba. Jim, an 81-year-old veteran of the Korean War. Jim and Patrick, they've been together 50 years, and Jim has always wanted to be buried at the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery, a national military cemetery, alongside Patrick. Patrick could not be buried there, however, because of the, under their civil union partnership. In July, these inequities were crystallized when the Supreme Court overturned the Defense of Marriage Act. <laughs> Justice, Kennedy, Justice Kennedy wrote in the majority opinion that DOMA's principal effect is to identify a subset of state-sanctioned marriages and to make them unequal. The differentiation demeans the couples whose moral and sexual choices the Constitution protects and whose relationships the state has sought to dignify. And it humiliates tens of thousands of children now being raised by same-sex couples. The law in question makes it even more difficult for those children to understand the integrity and closeness of their own families. And it is your door knocking, your phone calls, your march on Springfield, your conversations with family, friends, legislators, your donated time and money, your perseverance that brought us to this moment today. Justice could not be denied. Thank all of you very much for your help and support on this. My husband, Leo, and two of my kids, Sam and Abby, uh, are here with me today. Um, we celebrate that all families can now enjoy the rights and the benefits and the obligations the squabbles, the dog parts to the beach, all of those things that come with marriage as we have done. Today, we welcome all families in Illinois as equally valued. We enable Teresa and Mercedes, who have been together 21 years, to marry so that everyone knows they are both their children's real mothers. We allow Jim and Patrick to be buried side by side after their lifetime together. As Victor Hugo once said, there is nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. The time is now, and thank you very much for making history in Illinois today. I think you just heard the passion and the determination of a state senator, Heather Staines, who made sure this law passed the Senate. The same kind of persistence and determination and passion was applied in the House of Representatives. The members of the House of Representatives are elected every two years, the most representative part of our legislative body. Uh, we had a great leader who never gave up, who always believed, who knew that we would get, be here this day because of the great, great support he received from all over Illinois over the spring and summer, and now the fall. We've worked so hard organizing. That's what democracy is all about. And a great leader of democracy is Representative Greg Harris. <laughs> Thank you, P-Flag moms. <laughs> but, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we're here to celebrate family, commitment, equality, love, courage, 
and community. When our Constitution was written, those who wrote it understood that liberty and equality are not destinations, but their journeys. And since that time, men and women have struggled to take step after step on that journey to ensure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And there are many famous people who led the way, and we've heard from a lot of them today, and we've applauded a lot of them today. But there are thousands of others across the state whose courage made today possible. And I just want to mention a few who symbolize the many thousands who made this bill come to be. There are religious leaders, including Pastor Otis Moss, the Reverend Dr. B. Herbert Martin, and Reverend Paul Jakes. There is Romeoville's Reverend Suzanne Anderson Hurdle, Reverend Richard Tolliver, and hundreds of other church leaders who stood for faith and social justice. Politically, there was Pat Brady, the former chairman of the Illinois Republican Party, who stood up for marriage. Because marriage is a family value. There are these families who had courage to publicly share their lives to make today possible. Families like Jim Darby and Patrick Bova, Vernita Gray and Pat Ewart, Rob Smith and his late partner, Stephen Rines. Families like Randall Krause Vincent, his husband James, and their friends that organized all across Kankakee County. We should celebrate cities like Decatur where their campaign to change every porch light green for equality lit up the night. And cities like, I think we got Decatur here. <laughs> and cities like Rockford where church and community leaders organized a march through their downtown to support equality. We need to thank community groups, trade unions, business leaders, faith leaders, and activists who stood together as Illinois Unites for Marriage. We should celebrate the thousands who braved the cold and wet to march on Springfield, including four really amazing young men who came down on a church bus, and I met them that day. They were cold and shivering in their shirt sleeves, but they came with me to the House floor, and they lobbied like true pros, and I think they're here today. They're, they're waving, so let me just say your name. Stand up, guys. Clayton Boyd, Dontrell Gardley, Anthony Johnson Jr., and Jabel McEwen. Come on, stand up. And of course, in the land of Lincoln, we always have to remember the words of Abraham Lincoln, especially since we have, you know, Abraham Lincoln's desk with us today. So I know the governor will have plenty of uh, Abe, Abe Lincoln quotes, so I, I just wanted to get one in first. <laughs> that just talks a little bit, I hope I'm not stealing yours, Governor Quinn, about the dedication it took to pass this bill by everyone here. It says, sometimes we walk slowly, but we never walk back. If you recall the movie Lincoln, there were also lobbyists. They were referred to in that movie as the Skulky Men. Uh, this effort had its lobbying team also, but they were hardly Skulky because they were so proud of the work that they did, and we need to know their names too, and I see them here in the audience. Dave Horwich, Mike Casper, Matt O'Shea, Mary Dixon, Kadeen Bennett, Dave Dring, Dave Sullivan, Coy Pugh, Gabe Lopez, Skip Saviano, Ramon Gardenhire, William McNary, Linda Delaford, Courtney Nottage, Dave Lewitsky, Randy Hannig, Jim Bennett, Anthony Martinez, Rick Garcia, John Kohap, and of course the relentless Shaw de Kremer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was a labor of love and it was a mammoth undertaking. We need to extend our support to those who helped make it possible. You know, there's a man who has supported so many progressive causes and continues to do so, Fred Eichner, who stood tall and never wavered in this. Thank you, Fred. I also want to thank the co-chairs of Illinois Unites for Marriage, uh, Laura Ricketts, and I think I see Ray Koenig sitting there in the back row. He waved. And finally, in the love category, I want to express my love to my 
colleague and friend, Naomi Jacobson, and her family for the sacrifice they made to make today possible. Naomi, please stand. And also to my friend, Representative Kelly Cassidy, who couldn't be here to join us today and share this because of the death of her mother. Naomi, Kelly, today is for you, your families, and all the loving families of our state. Thanks. thank Heather and Greg for their uh, words that uh, I think move all of us and for their commitment to the common good. I also want to acknowledge uh, our legal officer in Cook County who early on when their lawsuit was filed stood on the side of marriage equality and that's Anita Alvarez. Anita, please stand up. And I do want to personally acknowledge someone who could not be here today, but who was a steadfast, fervent supporter of marriage equality every step of the way, and that's uh, President John Cullerton of the Illinois Senate. Thank you, John Cullerton. <laughs> now, this is a day of celebration, so we believe in music, and uh, we also believe in hymns. And so we are now going to ask the Chicago Gay Men's Chorus to sing a hymn we all know and love.
I think the uh, words of America the Beautiful are very profound. It talks about mending every flaw. And also, in the third verse of America the Beautiful, it says, O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. And so our next speakers are individuals who understand that full well. Jim Darby served the United States military, Korean War. He's a veteran of the United States military. He's with his partner, Patrick, and they're coming forward to say a few words. Come on forward, Pat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Patrick Bova, and this is my partner, Jim Darby. We've been very active in Chicago and Illinois for years, working on gay and lesbian veterans' rights and also the freedom to marry. We've been together for over 50 years. I can remember so many times when I was celebrating families and friends' anniversaries and thinking how wonderful it would be to celebrate my marriage to Jim. Finally, that day has come. Because of our love and commitment to each other and the importance of marriage to so many families in Illinois, we've helped Lambda Legal and the Illinois Unites Coalition to get this bill passed. Today is a day that we celebrate alongside countless Illinois veterans who, like us, would not be able to access full veteran rights without marriage. With marriage, Jim and I will be able to be buried together in Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. <laughs> this is not a small privilege, a resting place for service members. We have never wanted special rights or extra rights. We've always wanted to be treated with the honor and respect that is afforded to anyone else that serves this country. Today is the day when we can look back on our five decades together and say, we can finally be newlyweds. Jim and every other veteran has taken care of our country, of our fellow citizens, and we're so happy to be able to say that Illinois will now take care of us. We love each other so much, and we are so proud to be able to marry in our home state of Illinois. Thank you to Governor Pat Quinn and Representative Greg Harris and everyone who made this possible for us. Thank you. Well, I think the hour is near, and uh, we heard. We heard from Representative Greg Harris, he mentioned about Abraham Lincoln, and uh, Jim and Patrick just mentioned Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery. And uh, we are the land of Lincoln, and we understand how important uh, Abraham Lincoln's legacy and words uh, are to us at all times. And it's, I think, most meaningful that yesterday was the 150th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. Uh, delivered by Abraham Lincoln uh, in 272 words. And it really spoke not only in 1863, but for all time, for all of us who live in America. And the very beginning of the Gettysburg Address, President Abraham Lincoln of Illinois said that our nation was conceived in liberty. And he said it's dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. 
And that's really what we're celebrating today. It's a triumph of democracy, a triumph of government of the people, that we believe in liberty and equality, and we're making sure that's part of our law. I think it's very, very meaningful that the desk that I'm going to be signing my name to, and I will have a lot of pens to sign with, and I want to make sure that we uh, mark this day. Uh, this desk was used by Abraham Lincoln to write uh, one of his inaugural addresses. And I think that we understand in our state that part of our unfinished business is to help other states in the United States of America achieve marriage equality. We want to have a new birth of freedom across America so that all 50 states of our nation have marriage equality. And love is not uh, relegated to a second-class citizen uh, status for any citizen in our country. And I think it's important, as we approach the moment of signing the bill into law, that we remember the words of a man named Paul, who said centuries ago, that love is patient, love is kind, love bears all things, love believes all things, love hopes all things, love endures all things, love never fails. And I'm gonna sign this bill right now.